to the uh, book of John, John chapter 10. We'll read something there and then we're going to go quickly over to Proverbs chapter 6. John 10 and Proverbs 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you were with us last week, I, I ministered and preached a message called Discerning the Times. Discerning the times. Discern means to understand and to perceive, to know the times. And it is God's will and plan that none of His children walk about um, clueless, unaware of the time in which we're living. Yes. The Bible talks about in several places how that the coming of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. As a thief in the night. But he is all, when he, and that phrase is used throughout the New Testament. Jesus used it repeatedly in Matthew 24, Matthew 25, Luke 21. It says that his coming is going to come like a thief in the night. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that, you, you get the picture of that, right? It's not, you don't expect a thief to break in your house. You know, if, like I said, if you were asleep, and I mean deep sleep, and it's the middle of the night, and then all of a sudden you are awakened and jolted by the sounding of pane glass being broken and an intruder in the home, it is a sudden, unexpected, instant adrenaline kind of a situation. Isn't that right? That's right. And so the Bible says that Jesus is coming, and He is coming. Jesus is coming. If you don't know that, He is. He is coming back to the earth bodily, gloriously. He's coming back. And, uh, you know, but before that comes, He's going to catch the church away. In a moment, Paul said, in a twinkling of an eye, right? We shall be changed. And we will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds. Hallelujah. So that's got to happen before His coming. But He is coming. And so He talks about His coming as a thief in the night. But, in all those references, there's, there's a but. The coming of, uh, as a thief in the night is to the world. To the unexpected. Paul said, but his coming will not come to you as a thief in the night. He said, I have no need to write to you concerning the times and the seasons of the Lord's coming and our gathering together into him. So evidently, we're supposed to know. I mean, when the rapture takes place, I, I believe that there'll be many of God's people. We're not surprised. Now, he didn't say that we could know the day or the hour. But he said we could know the season that these things should happen and should take place. Praise God. And, uh, but uh, we're going to add something a little bit. The Lord and I were talking last night. I love the Lord. I'll tell you, I'm going to take a very short rabbit trail off the main trail here. I just love the Lord. You know, I was, I'm, I'm a hard worker. I, I think I am. I, I'm a hard worker. And I'll just tell you something about myself. I was a little bit beating myself up, you know, last night, thinking, my goodness. I mean, we were, I just worked, worked, worked around the church and tile and just really, really worked. And now I've got all my spiritual preparation to do. And in a sense, I feel like, man, I, I'm failing, Lord. I should be doing this. And then I thought, I was, that was my mode of thinking. And the Lord helped me. He said, son, you, you think Paul, you think Paul, before he ever ministered or preached or did anything, that he, he had eight, ten hours every time of prayer? And, and then he, he reminded me of a scripture. He said, Paul laboring day and night with his own hands. And then he went and preached, laboring day. And I just, I thought, yeah, you know, he did, didn't he? He did. He said he labored and toiled day and night, and then he got up and preached. I said, thank you, Father. He said, I've anointed you. You're, I, I, I had to pick someone who could handle this kind of situation. <laughs> I just appreciate the Lord helping me. You know, if you need help, the Lord will help straighten your thinking out. He said, he said you're more cooperating with the enemy and beating yourself up over working for me. 
So I was like, well, I'm just going to let that go then. And I said, well, you know, I mean, that is true. I worked up here all day for you. And now I need, now I need to be ready spiritually. We're in revival. People are counting on me to hear from you. Yeah. And he said, well, I want you to tell them something. So I'm going to tell them what you, I'm going to tell you what he told me to tell you. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So notice here it says, Jesus said in John 10, 9, I'm reading from my Amplified Bible. He said, I am the door. I mean, if you want a way in, he is the way in to blessing. You know, doors, you go in, but you also exit. You go out. A lot of people today, they're looking for a way out. They're looking for a way out of depression. They're looking for a way out of hopelessness. They're looking for a way out of despair. They're looking for a way out of brokenness and sickness and disease and all of the things that uh, uh, people are experiencing in the world. And pe- they're looking for a way out. And, and, you know, if you don't have Jesus, I don't have any problem. You know, I don't look down on someone that's drowning in alcohol or drugs. I mean, without Jesus and all that's going on in the world, the darkness, the abuse, right. I, I can understand the unredeemed mind running to those things to just numb themselves from the pain. But there is a way out. There's a way out. There's a way out of a bad marriage and it's not divorce. There's a way out, glory to God, amen, of bondage. And there's a way out of fear. There's a way out of torment, unhappiness, unfulfillment. Glory to God. And so He's the way out and He's the way in. Just accept that. He said, I'm the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved. Amplified says we'll live. He will come in and he will go out freely and will find pasture. Then notice what he says, the thief. The thief. Everyone say thief. Thief. The thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. It wouldn't be wise, would it, to make friends with a thief? Give your safe combination to a thief. No, come on. Isn't that right? That's right. You know, let them know where you've hidden your emergency fund. No. You know, lend them the key to your car. That'd be foolish, wouldn't it? Yeah. A known thief. Yeah. The thief does not come to bless you. No. The thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we know who this thief is. Yeah. It's the devil, Lucifer, Satan, right? The enemy, he's a thief. I want you to know that he's a thief. And he comes to steal, and he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. But Jesus said, I am Cain. I, I came that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance. Glory to God. Have it in abundance. Not just a little bit. To the full. To the full. I don't know about you. I want to live a full life. Amen. I I want to be fulfilled in my life. I just have one. Today's the only day I get. And then I'll get another one tomorrow. Amen. But this, this is it. And I'm going to enjoy my life. Praise God. I'm going to enjoy what God's called me to do. How, how about you? Amen. Praise God. He said, I want you to have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. <laughs> Praise God. That's what Jesus will give you. Now go over to Proverbs chapter 6. I took you there first because I want you to know who the thief is. The thief is our adversary, the devil. He's defeated, but he's loose. He's not locked up yet. He's loose. We're going to have to deal with him. Well, the Lord brought me over to this verse, Proverbs 6.31. And he reminded me, he said... uh, I said something about thieves. 
<laughs> let's read it. Look at this. It says, let's read verse uh, 32. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. Still wrong, but we get that, right? Someone stealing to put food in his belly. But even then, notice verse 31. But if he, the thief, if he is found out, what's that mean? If he's found out, if he's caught, if a thief is caught, he must restore seven times what he stole. He must give the whole substance of his house, if necessary, to meet his fine. And the Lord said, I go and tell my people that I'm about to restore what the thief has stolen from them. So he told me to tell you. <laughs> he said the thief must restore. Even if it costs him everything he has, everything he's accumulated, he must pay you back what he stole. And not just what he stole. Seven times what was taken. Hallelujah. That, that's, that's a, seven is the perfect number. Seven is the number for perfection. The number for absolute completion. You know, have you ever had something stolen from you? You know, I had a gun stolen from me. And, uh, you know, not only was that item stolen from me, the, this is why a sevenfold thing is righteous. It's just. It's because not only did I have that stolen, but all the time in between getting my next one, my replacement, I was without that supply. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Uh -huh. And you, you know, in whatever it was that's stolen, it costs you things. It costs you time. It costs you inconvenience. It costs you mentally. You got to go through all that and feeling violated. Amen? God here is dealing with natural thieves. But there is the thief. And his name is Satan. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. That's what, that's what Paul says. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with principalities and powers. We wrestle with the enemy who is at work through people who yield to him. Willingly or unwillingly, knowingly or unknowingly, to harass you, harm you, steal from you, destroy, kill, whatever they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. God said for me to tell you, latch on to this verse. Latch on to this verse and have faith. Believe Him and He will restore seven times. And notice, God is going to force it. Notice this is an enforcement verse. When he's caught, he must restore up to seven times what he took, even to the whole of his house. Glory to God. God will enforce this, but notice what was stolen. This restoration, it's going to come from the kingdom of darkness. It's going to be pulled out of the hand of the one who took it from him. That means not only are you about to gain what was lost and seven times more, the enemy is about to suffer loss. There is a transfer taking place in the realm of the Spirit. And, and you know, I had a real witness when he said this to me. This is, this is for us individually. This, this, but he, this is for America. Because the church missed it. And we were not alive. We were not awake enough. We were not diligent enough. Our nation, a Christian nation, we, we have lost things. We, had, we are having freedom stolen. We are having the rule of law stolen. We are having moral decency ripped away and stolen. But no more. No more. I believe there's coming a sevenfold restoration of righteousness and justice to our nation. 
Man, it was never God's will that we lose this, but we did. We did. But God wants to restore that. To restore that. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know if you saw this video on Facebook. You probably hadn't about a, 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 a North or South Carolina state senator got in his place in the government there and preached to the church. Where is the church? Rise up church. When you get a politician in his place of giving speeches in the state house calling for the church, well, let's answer the call. Let's rise up. And one of the things we say is concerning our nation, Satan, not only will you go no further than you have gone, but you must now restore back seven times what you stole. Seven times what you stole. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. But I want you to take inventory and to take stock of what has been stolen from you. If the enemy got in there and worked in a spouse and, and you were robbed of a spouse, you were robbed through a divorce, you were robbed through a death, sickness is an enemy. Sickness is a, the thief of health. Some of you have sevenfold health ready to be restored. Sevenfold strength ready to be restored. If you were persecuted, passed over for a promotion... Well, hallelujah. I know for Amber and I, especially on Amber's side, there was inheritance, lands, oil rights, wealth that was lost, that was stolen by the enemy. Amen? Well, you got to pay back. Got to pay back. Now, who's going to get this? It's not going to happen just because you heard it. You're going to have to attach your faith. Take stock and take inventory. What has the enemy stolen from you? Write it down. Proverbs 6.31 is the Lord's word to you today. The thief must pay me back seven times what I lost. You know, as a minister, you know the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and on the unjust. And uh, when the church would not follow the Spirit, especially through Kenneth Hagin's ministry, into what God had for us, judgment came. Judgment came on the church. And we've seen the church go wild, inviting world, because, you know, God took His hand off. Look, go out to Isaiah, uh, Hosea for a minute. Go to Hosea. You think you're skilled enough to find Hosea? I don't know, y'all pray for me. Hosea is before Joel. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 5, the last verse, and then we'll spill over into the sixth chapter. What was I talking about before we talked about Hosea here? Judgment on the church. Oh, yeah. Judgment came to the church, and the church went wild. You know, uh, when, uh, when God decided, okay, you're not going to follow me. You're not going to flow with me. You're not going to listen to the leaders I sent. Well, he just withdrew his hand. Well, that, that has an effect. We, the church noticed the departure of God's presence and spirit like we had enjoyed it before. And now to substitute, half the church panicked and adopt worldly methods to keep things going. That's what they did. Compromise the word. Well, in that, those of us who, by God's grace... Though there was tremendous pressure from 2003 to 2010 during that seven-year drought to, uh, you know, and you had all kinds of political upheaval. I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff happened. Well, those of us that didn't compromise, we're in that. We're watching our, we're watching our congregations dry up. And here we are building a building in the midst of the crash of 08. Watching our numbers get down to about 65 people on a Sunday morning. Building a $2 million facility. <laughs> telling you. Amen. And I'm just telling you that during that time, even though we stayed faithful, we experienced drought. Yeah. Yeah. 
God called Elijah to proclaim a drought, and it affected him. It affected him. This whole thing has affected us. We lost some things. We missed out on some things. There's some things the church should have had we didn't have. There was finances the church should have enjoyed that we didn't enjoy. It was right. We were stolen from us. <laughs> oh, glory. Look at verse 15 of Hosea 5. It, this is God. This is God talking about His wayward people Israel, but it's, it's type and shadow for us today. Yeah. Notice God said, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Yeah. God just said, all right, I'm out of here. I'm going to leave you to your own devices for a while until you acknowledge your offense. And what? Seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Isn't it? Isn't it? We, we're hard on Israel sometimes because we watched how they rebelled against God. And we're like, oh, come on, guys. Why are you doing that? We've done the same thing. We've done the same thing. And they would, they would be blessed by God and then they would get spiritually lazy and selfish and greedy, and they forsook God and disobeyed Him, and they wouldn't turn it. They would be warned. God would raise up a prophet, but they wouldn't listen. So God had to retreat, withdraw the blessing, and notice it says, they'll seek me early in their affliction. Really, what we've seen in America is the mercy of God. Now, I don't like the, the decision of the Supreme Court and gay marriage and all that. I hate it. It's wicked. It's awful. Amen. But I am thankful the church is awake. I sense that in my spirit. The church is awake. It woke up. It jolted the church. Because we would talk about it and people would warn us and people would laugh it off. Oh, the Supreme Court won't ever. No, God. No. And, sure, and we woke up one day. And sure enough, they did. And it's sad that we've had to endure this affliction. But I'm thankful, whatever it took, to wake the church up. To wake the church up. Amen. It's time for us to arise. It's time for us to speak with one voice. It's time to, for us to forget, to, to stop allowing things like denomination to divide us, color to divide us. We are the body of Christ. If we will stand up and speak with one voice, Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, Charismatics, we cannot be overcome. We cannot be stopped. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So this is what he said. He said, in their affliction, they'll seek me early. Well, this is a time of seeking the Father. Seeking the Father. Look at verse 1 of the next chapter. Come and let us return to the Lord. If you've been away from Him, well, just come back. Nobody's mad at you. We need you. We need you. We need you in the church. I mean, it's all hands on deck time. We need you trained. We need you in your positions. God is about to fill this place. We're not going to have enough room. I'm not going to be able to preach every sermon. You need to be ready. You need to be prayed up. You need to cross train and be able to fill where we might have gaps and holes in children's ministry or greeting. You need to be able to step into a place and function. Because there's a harvest coming. Praise God. Come and let us return to the Lord. For He hath torn and He will heal us. He hath smitten and He will bind us up. Well, thank God we're, we've, we've been torn. It's healing time. We've been smitten. It's time to be bound up, to be healed. And then notice this. After two days, He will revive us. That's what's happening right now. Glory to God, Elizabeth. That's what's happening right now. He will revive us. On the third day, He will raise us up. And we shall live in His sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. 
Come on. Yeah. Notice this. If we will do this, this is the call of God, I believe, right now to us, to His church. Amen. If we'll press in, decide to be revived. Decide, I'm going to know God better. Yeah. I am going to know God better. I'm going to make the changes. Yeah. It's just like what the youth came up. We're cutting things out of our life so that we can know God better. Yes. TV and think about all the kids, you know, the gadgets and the, all that. We've got to cut things out of our life and make room so that we can know God better. He says, if we'll do this, His going forth is prepared as the morning. What's He mean there? It's sure. Anybody wonder? This morning, did you go to bed worried about the morning, if it would come? No, no the coming of the morning is sure. Yeah. Amen. Just like clockwork. God has already ordained it. He's already declared it. If we'll just cooperate with Him. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He will come to us, how? As the rain. He will come to us in the form of rain. And the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Praise God. That's what's going on. Now you're there in Hosea. That's good. Go to Joel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. You ought to, you ought to be waiting on me to be quiet long enough for you to say some things to the devil. Some of you need to be going home and in your car. All right, Satan. I got a word from the Lord today. You must pay back. Amen. Some of you, you've had long periods of just hardship and heartache watching your children stray from God. Time for restoration. Time for restoration. Some of you, you have tithed and given and tithed and given and tithed and given and tithed and given and tithed and given. And it is time for every dollar, every lost opportunity, every hindering action of the devil in your financial life, he must be made to pay back seven times what was lost. To you find it. God is going to fund this revival. He's like I said, we the kingdom is about to gain, and our gain will be the devil's loss. These resources he's talking about, they're not coming from heaven. They're coming out of the hands of wicked men who have heaped up riches. For evil purposes, part of this shaking is going to loose that out of their hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I thank you, Father. You know, some of the things, the greatest, most precious things in my life, the devil stole and doesn't have anything to do with money. You know, for many years, God, just, God didn't have my dad. The devil did. And, you know, when you live like the devil, you, you, you get the fruit of it. And, and you know, right as in, the, in the prime of my childhood, I guess, I lost my dad through divorce. I lost. I had my daddy robbed from me. Four days out of 30 is all I got to see him. Right? All of that. All that time, all those years, lost. The devil did that. God didn't have anything to do with that. Some of you, your parents were not what they should have been to you. They failed you. Right? Amen. Well, the enemy was working it. Not God didn't have anything to do with it. When people yield to the, you know, the enemies out there pushing and tempting and People yield to the devil, yield to the enemy. And there's always theft. There's always stealing. He doesn't come except 
to steal. Now, I don't want to be a kid again. But the years I lost, the years, the time, the time around a broken bicycle I didn't have, the time learning how to change a tire with him that I didn't have, the quality moments that I didn't have, I expect to get quality moments restored back to me with my dad. I know my dad's 72, uh, but he lives young. And I've told the Lord, I'm asking you, not only did I lose my dad in my childhood, you have sent me to another state. And I don't get the time my brothers get with my dad. And I'm asking and I'm expecting that before he goes home to be at the Lord, that you grant us rich, quality time moments. And it's going to happen. It's going to take place. We've got some things planned for this fall. <laughs> God gave me a farm and it's got deer on it. I've never killed me one, but this fall, my daddy and I both. We're not going hunting. We're going killing. We're going killing. We're not going to go hunt something. We're going to kill something. Together. As a father-son deal. Amen. On the farm God gave us. Amen. I'm just telling you, I don't know what it is in your life. Right. Or that the, the, in, the victories the enemy had in your past. Yes. God will restore it to you. Yes. Amen. That's right. He is far greater in power and might and ability than the devil. Yes. And if we'll use our faith, God will use His power to make the devil pay you back. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Now Joel chapter 2 is all about the end time outpouring. It's all about that. But I want to skip down for time's sake all the way down to verse number 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Notice it doesn't say be sad. It says, be glad. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Amen. Now, prophetically speaking, type in shadow, the children of Zion, Zion is a type in shadow of the church. Not in reality, there is a remnant Israel. But by type in shadow, right, there are references that apply to the church. Glory to God. For instance, that verse, I think it's in Isaiah, said that, uh, that uh, we shall travail and Zion will give birth to her children. That's converts. That's people being born again. That's a reference to the church. So notice it says, he's talking to the church. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The floors shall be full of wheat. That's prosperity. And the fats fats shall overflow with new wine and oil. That's spiritual blessing. And what is the next? And I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, the great army which I sent among you. And you will eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. These delinquents out there filing lawsuits and acting a fool and mocking God are walking a fine line. And we should pray lovingly for them. Because God will not be mocked, Galatians 6. God will not be mocked. And if the church will, as we have begun to do, rise up, unite, and pray, and vote, and make a stand, and say no more, 
this will end. It'll end and the enemy will retreat. And God will restore. God will restore the nation back. Randall Greer believes, a minister, a friend of mine, he believes that the enemy was globally, he was setting the stage for the Antichrist to to, just step onto the scene. But God said it wasn't time yet. Wasn't time for that yet. So God is shaking things. And he's correcting things. And it's been violent. And it's not over. But it's not time. You want to know why it's not time? Because the precious fruit of the earth is still being reaped. Why rain? When he talks about early rain and latter rain in the Bible, he's talking about blessing Israel's crops. They sowed in the fall. Their year begins in the fall. So the early rains would be actually September and October rain. And that rain was so vital there and still is today to uh, water the newly planted seed. Well, see, when the church was born, God gave the rain in Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Isn't that right? Peter, Peter said, this is that, which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out of my spirit. That new seed of the, of the church was born and God was watering it. But then in the springtime, the Jewish harvest season would come the latter rain. Right? The latter rain. And that was to give that growing crop a final boost towards harvest. That's, what's, that's what this rain is watering all the seed. There's a crop growing. And God's going to maximize. It's going to be a, what a bumper crop. So he's giving the rain to refresh the harvester. Amen. And to get ready for this. End. And so it wasn't ready. It wasn't time for the devil to have his seven year season. That's why you've seen all this shaking. Glory to God. God said, I will restore to you the years that were consumed and that were lost. Glory to God. And notice uh, verse 28, it shall come to pass. I will pour out my spirit. That doesn't come till after. There must come restoration in this outpouring, in this revival. And that's just what God told me to tell you. That he, he told me to tell you in closing, I said something about a thief. I said in Proverbs 6, 31, that when a thief is caught, some people see, they don't even realize the devil's robbed them. But when you find out, when the light dawns, when you identify, that's the devil that took my, whatever. When he's caught, remember God said, that when a thief is caught, he must pay back seven times. Even if it costs the devil everything he's gained to pay it back, he must. Amen. He must. He must. He must. Hallelujah. He must. Satan, in the name of Jesus, you're caught. You are caught. You are caught by the Holy Ghost. You are caught... And now we uh, bring Proverbs 6, 31 to bear on you and on the kingdom of darkness on behalf of everyone listening to me. Glory to God who agrees in the name of Jesus. Satan, we command you to give up, to restore, and to pay back not out of heaven's resources, out of your resources, out of your dark house. Pay back all that was lost up to seven times what you took. Not up to at least that. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we command it to be so. And now we believe we receive our individual portion of restoration in relationships, lost opportunities, finances, inheritance, blessings, health, marriages, children. 
We have authority in the realm of the Spirit. And I just sense the kingdom of darkness reeling. He doesn't want to, but he knows he must. He knows he must. And he shall. And he shall. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Why don't you stand to your feet and just thank Him. Father, we thank You for reminding us of this.